We're sorry you're unable to visit St Swithin's Church here in the heart of Retford. We'll tell you a little bit about it now and hope that one day soon you'll be able to come inside and explore the building for yourself. The earliest mention of a church here dates from 1258. The building we have today is what's known as perpendicular in style. It's built in the shape of a cross with a central tower. During a storm in 1651, the original tower collapsed and destroyed much of the chancel, that's the east end of the church, and the south transept here. The transepts are the arms of the cross, one to the north and the other to the south. The tower and the ruined parts of the church were rebuilt in 1658. Let's go inside. As we enter the nave, you can see the red and white tape we've had to use to block off some of the pews. That's to ensure social distancing when we hold services. You can see the original slender pillars supporting the roof. Just compare them with the four massive ones that were built in 1658 to hold up the newly restored tower. This is just one of them. There are ten bells in the tower, and when we are able to ring them, they make a wonderful sound. In the nave, the transepts and the chancel, there are angels under the roof supports. They're all different. Some of them carry musical instruments, like this one with cymbals and this one with some kind of pipe, while others hold shields. This one carries the cross of St George, while this depicts two chuffs, the arms of the borough of East Retford. The oldest part of the building is the north transept. It used to be called the Lady Chapel, but it's now used as our meeting room. On the north wall is a war memorial to the Knotts Sherwood Rangers Yeomanry, and high above us on the central wall you'll find the banner of the Borough of East Retford. There are those chuffs again. If you keep looking up, you can also see vestiges of medieval painting on the arches. The church would probably have been decorated throughout with wall paintings depicting Bible stories and the lives of the saints, until the Reformation in the 16th century when they were painted over by order of the Parliament. The church organ was originally situated in a gallery on the west wall of the church. In 1841 a new organ was built into a chamber on the south side of the chancel. It was enlarged in 1886 and completely rebuilt in 1980 when the present movable console was made. There are a number of interesting memorials in the church. The oldest dates from 1496 and is in memory of Henry Smythe. You can no longer see that because it's under the carpet in the north transept. There's a war memorial corner in the southeast of the nave with a book of remembrance commemorating people who died in the Second World War and the standards of the local branch of the British Legion were laid up when the word Royal was added to the Legion's title. This memorial commemorates Ellen Marion, wife of Hawksley Hall. Her many friends paid for the central panel in the east window of the church. Here it is, close to. The church has some fine windows depicting Bible stories in stained glass. There are a few fragments of medieval glass, but the majority dates from the 19th and 20th centuries. Some tell Bible stories like this one, showing the Holy Family at home in Nazareth, and this one of the Last Supper Jesus had with his disciples. This is an unusual window. It shows the wise men visiting Mary and Joseph in Bethlehem. The star shines on the child Jesus. What makes it unusual is that it's set into an interior wall, so it's actually quite hard to see. This one is made of fragments of glass collected by a former church warden who was a stained glass artist. We make our way back down the central aisle to the southwest door. When we came in, we didn't notice a statue of a bishop set over the door. He's often thought to be our patron saint, St Swithin, but he most probably isn't. He was brought from a monastery in Portugal which was dissolved, and we don't know who he's supposed to be. As we go down the path, we look for a last time at the church. Let's hope the coronavirus pandemic will soon be tamed. Then we shall look forward to welcoming you again, but this time for a proper visit.